Hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bush, and today we're going to be having a look at the Type 59 pattern. Now, this is the event tank that's been running around, and indeed, I played it on the weekend, and I want to get two things out of the way here. One, I liked the tank. It was really, really good fun. Uh, number two, the event tanking, man, it can be fun, and it can be quite the chore uh we had some really crazy teams going on on the weekend uh but for good or real i still really enjoyed the tank regardless and i feel tough I, it was a sub 50 percent win rate in this tank but you're gonna see from me driving it it certainly didn't feel like a sub 50 percent win rate tank it does some lovely things uh if you've ever driven the t95e2 it's the tier 8 uh american tank that looks nearly exactly the same has a little bit of a different chassis um then you would understand a lot about this tank. But this is, for me, a better version of the T95E2. It's got a very, very big weak point on top. Obviously, you can see on the right-hand side of the turret. But it's got excellent DPM for a Tier 8 medium. Tier 8 mediums, especially ones with gun depression, to seem, tend to have 2,000 DPM to 2,200 kind of DPM, uh, depending on the armor profile. Uh, this thing... Like the AMX CDC has 2,466 DPM. Uh, that's damage per minute, as does the T95E2. But what this has is a much stronger turret than the T95E2 and an extra degree of gun depression, although it does lack gun elevation, uh, which, which is in interesting. And you can see, if you know how to drive mediums, you can side hug, you can go hull down, you can be very cheeky, very sneaky, and it's rough enough and tough enough to get things done like that. What it struggles with, surprisingly, is camo. It doesn't have the same kind of camo that some of these other tanks have. And uh, I've got some numbers here for you just to show you. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 95A2 and the 59 pattern. Um, the camo on them, this is according to Blitz Stars, but it seems pretty solid. After a shot, your camo on both of them is very poor, obviously. But while you're still moving, uh, the camo on the 59 pattern is 15%. The camo on the T95E2 is 23%. That's on still. And while moving, 11% for the 59 pattern, which is quite low, and 17% for the 95E2. To give you an idea on how how that fares, uh, the T34E2, for instance, which is a very low slung tank, and generally the lower you are, the smaller your profile, the better your camo, has 30% camouflage rating. So you're half the camo rating of a T34 and 2. And if you go crazy and you bring up a light tank, like say the AMX 1390, you're looking at, at tanks that have 31% camo rating while on the move. Uh, and that's, that's an awful lot of camo rating, right? So those tanks also though like you have good dpm for a tank with this much armor and by this much armor i mean on your turret you get uh about 220 millimeters to 225 millimeters of straight out uh armor profile when you you flatten and, and dandy obviously you've got a massive weak point there that everyone can pen and that's one of the reasons i really liked this tank uh you had to play this one pretty intelligently you couldn't just go hell for leather and expect to bounce everything you had to play good solid gameplay mechanics you can see the getting the angles right uh resetting camo when necessary just working around saving the hit point pool you know for for clearing a target that kind of thing and it's it's not quite super mobile enough uh to be called a real good mobility meet you know it's it's a lot like a lot like an old school M48A1 pattern. Um, the DPM on this tank is legitimately good for a tier eight med. Its mobility is okay. It's got 10 degrees of gun depression. It's got strong turret apart from the weak point on top, which is, that's almost to a T, the same kind of thing that you'd be dealing with in an M48A1 pattern back in the day before it got buffed out the yin yang. And it's now a really, really good medium. And I like that uh, because this tank f feels like what a premium tank should be for me. Uh, it's strong enough to compete at its tier. It has some very positive parts to it, but it also has some, um, some really big issues. Issues that if you're not careful, can be exploited by the bad guys to really cause some upsets. And again, it felt way better than the performance that I got out of it for... And I mean, that's that's RNG. Like, I, I drove the AMX 30B on Asia, 
and I drove it for like 40 games with a 60% something win rate, but I was getting smacked in it and I just got lucky to have good teams. Uh, I was averaging 1,800 damage, 1,795 at tier 10, which is like the same damage I was averaging in this thing at tier eight and ending up with a 45% win rate. And then I go and play the Amex 30B on NA and I've got 60% plus win rate or, or sorry, lower win rate, but two and a half thousand average damage. So you're just going to have days where you don't get to play enough to get a real good indication and, and a lot of clarity with the tank. And so I'm just going on gut feeling. And I my feeling is this tank can compete. This is a very, very good tank at tier eight and can compete, but it's got weak points which i think a lot of people are going to struggle with something that is interesting that i did with the tank was i got rid of the aim time uh and instead went for the refined gun bringing the dispersion down to 0 0.281 uh and i think there is a real benefit for getting guns under 0 0.30 dispersion it feels like uh if you can do that and you and you play peekaboom you're going to be okay. Uh, and the aim time on this thing seems pretty solid anyway. Like, it, it's enough. You can deal with it. Uh, I would say the the tank struggles in one particular area. And I, I don't know if you've looked at the tank, but it is... It's got 180 millimeters of AP pen. Now, it does have heat. So you can mitigate that. And you've got enough DPM to actually manage... Uh, to raise the heat without killing your DPM completely. You'll still have enough DPM to compete at tier 10, but at tier 8. But when you get upgraded to tier 9, and you've, you're dealing with tanks like uh, ST1s and and other big boys like Moistgens and, and E75s and things, this tank can have a real struggle penning. But it's, I'll, I'll put that in some kind of perspective for you. Because if you hear people say it sucks, it doesn't have enough pen, Tanks like the T-44 uh, and the Type 59 itself and all those tanks that run 100mm guns, you have a 90mm gun, they generally have the same kind of pen issues. 175mm uh, of AP pen, like T-54 mod ones, all those kind of tanks. Um, so I've had no issues. I, look, I can deal with that kind of pen. It's, it's not a problem. Uh, it's it's certainly not ideal, but it's not the kind of thing that's going to make you bang your head against the wall. And the predominant uh, tier rate is pretty popular. You'll get an awful lot of tier eight games rather than tier nine games. Uh, tier eight, it's just a, a sensible thing to do. You can see, I know there's guys down the end here, so I'm not going to YOLO. I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to look for an opportunity to help a teammate out and... Everyone dies anyway. It doesn't make any difference. This is event tanking, man. Event tanking, if you're wondering what I mean by that, I don't mean like going to a field, popping pills and listening to a bloke uh, on the decks doing these things. Um, what I'm talking about is when they're doing grind events like this with the Type 59, where you can play a lot of games and progress and then spend a little bit of cash and get your Type 59 tank, um, a lot of people come out to play who don't normally play or they play tiers that they don't normally play. Whatever the case may be, you get a lot of people coming in and that's good for the game. But it does also mean that you get a lot of games where both sides of the coin are in play here, where you get teams that don't know what they're doing um, compared to the opposition and you get your team knowing exactly what they're doing and the opposition not having a clue. So you get a lot of very high steamroll style games. But that's fair enough. Um, it's the price. I think the event's a good event. And I think it's something that people should aspire to. This is a great tier 8 medium to get a hold of. And it's a really good teaching tank as well. It's the kind of tank that you can um, really make a lot of hay with in a hull down position. If you don't move around a lot and if you're stationary a lot, that turret is going to take a pounding because the weak point on top does not behove you to just sit still. But if you're actually thoughtful and you move around a bit, you can hide a lot of that turret. And you can see I'm in a tough spot. The team is just the team is just evaporating. Lucky bounce there. For, uh, he fired AP at my ass. He should just fight HE and he would have torn me apart. And now we're just going to take this guy on because everyone's disappearing and if we don't clear them out there's going to be nothing left it doesn't make any difference everyone's going to die anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this there's a lot more content coming down the pipe um i've been having a great time playing tanks lately i, I play a lot of blitz still i don't know why you get people who get in the youtube comments section saying man you're a, you've left blitz and you're a, uh, stream 
all the time. I've just been away, guys, from all channels. It's uh, it's not a, a crazy thing. I've been away, like, and then YouTube terminated my account for a week. So, like, three and a half of the last five weeks, I've not been in the country or having a YouTube channel. Uh, love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Lots more coming. Look after yourselves. And as always, stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.